Hi, good morning and good evening to everyone. Welcome to mainframe tutorials of CICS. It's been a long time that I have been being posted on the CICS. I'm really so sorry to say about these things. So from now, I'll be keep posting on this CICS. So this will be the sixth video on CICS tutorial. Just to recap what all the videos I have been posted on CICS, it was like the first video I posted was an introduction to CICS where uh, I was explaining about what exactly the CICS stands for like these like uh, customer information control system and uh, the various applications used for CICS and uh, I was explaining about uh, the batch and online about the multiple batch environment and multiple online environment and uh, about the, the explaining the difference between the job and transactions job contains like batch programs and transaction contains like online programs so so that was the introduction to CICS and uh, we spoke about what is map and map set and uh, the basic assembler macro which we use for to create uh, screens and uh, uh, we spoke about the important fields or uh, important keywords that are used uh, uh, cr while creating an, a map or map set so and we spoke about what is the difference between batch and online and uh, who are the users of the CICS and uh, the diff uh, important terminologies uh, that we will be using in CICS we spoke about what is a transaction, what is task, what is multi-threading and multitasking and uh, uh, re-entrancy and the quasi re and re and uh, other various fields and we spoke about the difference between the screen, map set, maps and fields uh, fields will be having like text fields and variable fields and uh, we saw the complete hierarchy of the screen then uh, we are discussing about the different ways of uh, placing and the cursor position techniques so that is like uh, what is the di di static uh, dynamic static way of technique and dynamic and relative way of positioning so so this was a uh, various videos i have been post game posted so coming to the latest video so in this video i would like to show you how do we develop a map using an assembler map grow right so so below is the screen just I wanted to develop and we would be seeing how do we develop the below screen using an assembler macro that is under CICS. So this is a screen which is having with the two fields I mean this is called as insurance data which is having the fields like a policy number and the customer name. So these are the two fields we would be creating a screen with this two, with the two fields okay this is called as insurance data so what is the step one we need to do is uh, for we ne you need to create a PDS and a member then code a assembler macro by using DFHMSFD, MSD, MDI and uh, MDF that is map set map and the field so I have created a uh, PDS member which is like TSO user ID CISS since I am going to create the maps so I just named the, the folder PDS member name as maps and uh, this would be the my map set name or the map name so let's see so uh, this would be the example so it will start with the map set name and uh, first would be the as as we know the hierarchy of uh, uh, coding a screen first would be the map set then maps and then followed by the fields so this would be the first we need to de define the map set so map set is followed by the map set name so since I'm differentiating with S, I indicates that map set and M indicates that map. Okay. So, uh, so the first will be like a type equal to map or desect or say uh, map. Uh, when we say map, it only creates a physical map. When you say desect, it creates only a symbolic map. When if you want both physical and symbolic map, yes, you need to use sysform. We will be talking more about uh, what is the difference between a physical map and what is the difference between a symbolic map. So mode is in or out or in out. We can use in and out. So you have to display the map and you have to enter the fields and again it has to display the map with uh, uh, with the fields populated or the back end calculations whatever it has been done so language so since I'm uh, I would be using in a COBOL program so I have you could as a COBOL so either you can use the PL1 also press terminal input output area default it would be sure that it should set to press control fr set print and a free keyboard yes i think i spoke with this so maybe we can discuss with more details when we come up with the more details advanced level okay 
and these are the consider these are these are as a this will be as a default so coming to the map field so as i said this is the map set name this is the macro i mean this is the keyword which we use which we which we need to use it this is the definition it may indicates that uh, or dfhmsd stands for the de defined field hierarchy maps definition okay so now we need to code a map so map is always uh, coded with the map set map name and followed by the map right so this is called as a map the size by default it should be 24 by 80 it means that 24 rows and 80 columns uh, if i want to use only make use of 10 rows and uh, 10 rows and uh, 20 columns then you can do, you can use it but you should use by default 24 by 80 right so don't i mean maximum you need to use 24 by 80 so it depends if you want a little bit less you can use depends on the requirements okay so so this is about the map now I created a complete layout of the map next I need to pick uh, the data the map so the first field was uh, the insurance data so uh, first I need to create a uh, field name I need to define the field so it is just an, a display field so I would be not defining any field name over here so dfhmdf uh, this is the field in the same way to give the description of this this it indicates a defined field hierarchy map definition field okay so one comma to the tenth position uh, okay in the first row in the tenth column I'm placing at insurance data and it is of length 30 in the first row tenth column I'm placing this data okay so in the same way length and uh, I'm giving an as I'm having an about this bar, so I would be using this here. So it is having some length 25 or 30 length, so it should be 30. So 30. So then add the policy number. This is also a non enterable field, so it's just a display field. So since that's the reason I'm not defining any field name over here, yes. Now coming to the div, now coming to the enterable field. So where we be actually the user enters the data. So I'm defining the field name over here in the place of position row, the fourth row, and the eleventh column. At the eleventh, or it could be should be coming to fifteenth or sixteenth. Okay. So attribute unprotected, protected, or right. So these are the various attribute parameters you need to you need to code whenever you define the field name. So it should be uh, either protected or unprotected. I mean, whenever you are, if you are trying to rate, uh, capture the data, you should give it as a protected. So initial cursor, input cursor, where the input cursor places on this first enterable field. Uh, then uh, you are giving and assigning a red uh, color to this. It is a dark, skip, and F set. F set indicates that uh, it means that it's on on mode. FR set means F, uh, uh, off mode. So where when you give this F set, it is set to on mode, where you can enterable the fields and uh, it the variables are stored into this field name. Okay, dark to skip to the next enterable field. Okay, skip stands for to skip the next random field. So in the same way, you have to define pick in and pick out. Uh, I mean, you, these are the uh, you are defining the length of the uh, policy number and uh, whenever it captures it will be stored in the whenever if you want to display the same po uh, policy number as output so you will be doing pick in or pick out so if it is if you are having if you are only accepting the data you just you need to use a pick in and if you are if you want both are in and out you should be using this so length is 16 uh, something okay so in the same way your customer name you'll be defining the customer name and the uh, yeah, since it is having the field so you'd be having this field and everything so so that's it so in this way you define a map set you define the map you define the fields and everything so once you once you are done with the macro and coding uh, you'll be compiling this and you'll be uh, j create j you'll be getting a uh, two outputs uh, one is a physical map and other is a symbolic map what does the physical map contains the physical map contains the object code actual physical object code so where, what does the symbolic map contain it contains the variables right it is used by the end user to interact uh, the 
width system that is whatever the map we had shown in the beginning so this map will be displayed to the user end user so it is used by the application program so whatever the fields we have coded right so it is created in the form of a copy book so where uh, we would be using we would be accepting these fields and we would be doing some calculations and we would be throwing back the results onto the screen so it is loaded in load library it is loaded in copy lib yes as i said so it's created the copy book and uh, a symbolic map will have a separate copy book where all the co uh, where all these are stored right it is generated by using type equal to map yes if you want the physical map you have to code type equal map if you want the symbolic map d set if you want both syspam as well so since i said it is using uh, it is creating a copy lib so for each variable each field it will be creating a five different kinds of variables so so we will be copying uh, we will be talking in more details what is the importance of uh, variables and where do we use exactly okay so this is the simple program i mean the the simple assembler program or assembler ma macro i mean sorry map is using an assembler macro so i would be in the next video i will be discussing more about uh, the different ways of creating a map and uh, so what are the importance of fields and uh, we would be we would be talking uh, we would be i would be coming up with the program and the way to be use it and how do we use it okay and we'll see the complete symbolic map structure and uh, uh, we'll see how to display the map to the user okay thank you for watching this video if you like this video kindly please sub uh, subscribe me on my youtube channel like comment or share thank you for your time and patience have a have a great and wonderful day or evening have a great day bye bye